So in this video, I wanna talk about your turn on as a man, your turn on for life, your turn on for women, and specifically what we're gonna talk about is your turn on for flirting when you're approaching women, meeting women for the first time or on a first date. So let's dive right in. Your turn on is essential, guys. So many nice guys out there just are not getting it because they're super sweet, they have big hearts, but they're not turned on when they approach women. They're not turned on for life. They're not turned on for the women. They're not turned on for their own passion in life. Or at least they're not letting the woman see their turn on because they're ashamed of letting her see it. You see, I have clients all the time that do have access to their turn on. They tell me this all the time. Oh, I have access to my turn on. I can get turned on. But they don't have access to that turn on in front of the woman they're meeting, when they're approaching, when they're talking to her. I used to see it all the time. I'd watch the guys walk up and start flirting. Or when they worked with our models, they would shut it off. And they didn't even realize they were doing it because they were so comfortable being turned on maybe at home with porn or with their guy friends or looking at a girl from a distance. So to understand deeper what this is, what it is to be turned on, it's not always sexual turn on. Turn on is a part of everyday life that allows you to feel passionate for this reality, then we've got to take a little bit of a deeper look at what it is. Turn on is the ability to feel the lower part of your body, the arousal in the lower part of the body, stimulation in the hips. It doesn't have to necessarily be in the cock and balls with stimulation in the hips. And then at a deeper level to let that turn on, that arousal run through your entire body to wake up your body, stimulate your body. This is creative energy. This is energy that creates babies, but it also creates businesses, it creates art, it creates the world. And when you're really in touch with your turn on, you're really in touch with life itself. You're really in touch with the creative energy of life. And this is what women want to feel from you as a man. On a protective level, if we were in a primitive world, she would need you to be in your passion, your turn on, really to go out there and get food, to keep her safe, to, to get things to happen on the physical domain. It's great that you have love and that you care and that you're nice and you're sweet. But if you want this physical body to do well and grow, you need turn on to put food on the table, to get things done in the physical plane. That's the energy that makes you wanna move and take action. If you're sitting there and you really love art, for example, you might really enjoy it or appreciate it or look at it and find it absolutely beautiful. But if you're turned on for that art and you're like, wow, there's something about it, it ignites a passion in me, you're more likely to become a painter. You're more likely to take action in the art world itself. And this is true of flirting in and of itself. If you love women and you just appreciate them, that's one thing. But if you have turn on and love for a beautiful woman and you love flirting with a beautiful woman and you have turn on and love for flirting, then walking over is gonna have an extra charge to it. It's gonna have an extra polarization to it that is gonna cause women to go, oh, I can feel this man's intent. I can feel the way he's looking at me. And so to understand this at an even deeper level, I just said that a little bit ago, we're gonna go even deeper now, turn on does happen down on the hips. So I want you to start paying attention to your hips right now. When you're talking to a beautiful woman you've just met, you don't know very well, you don't have any type of intimate relationship with, are you comfortable with sitting down in the lower part of your body? I'm not saying to close your heart, keep your heart a little open, keep this warmth right here. If you can get in touch with that, this is the embodiment piece. But also, can you automatically feel your hips? Can you feel your balls? Can you feel the sacrum, which is the back of the, lo the lower back behind the, uh, the hip area? Can you rest in that? Can you sit and almost take up a little space with that energy? And when you look at somebody, can you talk to them with that energy? This is what turn on feels like. If you can do this automatically, you're doing great already. Now, the next question is, can you do it? And I might have already asked this, but can you do it while talking to somebody new? Attractive woman that you're interested in. Can you rest in that energy? And this does not mean getting horny. This just means there's a warmth or a tingle down there and talk to her at the same time and feel this little charge. Like, who are you? What's your name? Where are you from? Can you rest in that and your heart, the warmth that's here at the same time where curiosity, appreciation, and joy are, and then creativity is down here and the curiosity ignites the creativity. And see if you can feel that right now, feel the combination of the two and just sit in it. This is where really good conversation comes from when you're flirting. The ability to take and sit in that part of your body and to enjoy it 
to appreciate it, to not make it wrong, to not make it right. It just is. It's part of being male and it's part of being human, male and human. It's also part of being female for her. And if you want to ignite this in her, you've got to ignite it in yourself first. You've got to bring it first. I often see women that do bring it first. This does happen, by the way, guys. Women will bring it to guys they're interested in first. But a lot of you nice guys, you just don't bring it back. You, you see it and you actually pull up and you pull out and you pull away. And this has a lot to do with the modern society. This whole idea that, oh, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to cross boundaries. I'm going to stay up here. And the question I have for you is how much permission do you need to step into that part of your body before you're going to do it? How much does a woman have to push to get you to drop into your turn on before you feel comfortable and safe being in your turn on with her? How much do you run away from this part of your body? If you start learning to go here naturally and easily on your own, start learning to take this turn on and put it into your passions, put it into the things you're already doing, which you probably already do and don't even realize it. Maybe you're an amazing guitarist and you've got turn on for that, or maybe you're a dancer. I've had a lot of clients recently that, are into, that have been dancers that love to dance and they have a lot of turn on for that. Maybe it's something else altogether. Maybe you can remember an ex-girlfriend that used to bring it out of you and you don't have it naturally, but boy, she could bring it out of you and you could feel that turn on when you would talk to her and that polarization would happen. That's what I'm talking about. You see, if you just have the heart, you create a nice bubble, real connected bubble. But if you have the turn on, you'll create polarization, like an almost an intimate stream between you and her of tension that is so damn sexy. It just rocks, especially if you're both giving each other permission. You're both relaxed into it. Now, remember, I'm going to go back to this. Turn on does not necessarily mean you rock hard and you're ready for sex. Turn on is passion. It's passion for life. It's passion for the person in front of you. It's passion for the moment. And it all stimulates from down here. And when you can live in that turn on for all of life, or let's say 80% of your life, you can walk around in turn on, you start to become pretty damn good with life in general, happy with life, turned on for life, alive with life. You start to wake up more and more ready to seize the day and ready to seize your woman. And she can feel that. And that is so much more exciting. You see, a man that has access to his turn on doesn't apologize for it and is proactive and in control of it. Well, he's a valuable man. He's a sexy man, whether he's short, whether he's tall, whether he's fat, whether no matter what he looks like, that is a much more valuable man. And you can develop that in yourself. You could start to bring that out. Now, hopefully you're getting value out of this and you're starting to understand the principle I'm talking about. Start to rest in your turn on, start to play with your turn on, start to explore what your hips feel like throughout the day. Start to notice when your turn on turns on automatically. Go explore that. Like where do you turn it on and you don't even realize it? Think of old relationships where you've had turn on and definitely do this. Check out my previous video uh, where I talk about James Dean and his turn on and watch that video where I do a release helping you stimulate this part of yourself more, helping you to get in touch with your turn on at a much deeper level. That will be linked somewhere in this video. So hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. Hopefully you're starting to understand what turn on is and what embodiment is. Embodiment comes from the heart, turn on comes from the hips. And if you're one of those guys that's just stuck in his head and you're talking hundred percent from his head, yeah, you're going to be having a lot of trouble. You got to get into the heart first, then the turn on and start building these realities. Okay. I hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and share. Make sure to check out that previous video I talked about. And uh, with that said, remember only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.